One of the last things we need to talk about is memory speed and its relation to size. Uh, and I already have up there. Uh, memory size does not affect the speed of memory. However, the amount of memory does affect the speed of the system. So uh, more memory does mean a faster PC to a point. It does not mean the stick itself is any faster. To make the stick perform faster, we have to have the fastest megahertz. We have to use dual channel architecture. We have the lo lowest clock rating available, the newest generation. But once those things match the motherboard, how do we make the whole system faster? So by adding more memory. In fact, adding memory is the single least expensive, easiest upgrade you can do to most systems. If your system has too little RAM, um, then it is going to perform worse. And part of the reason that happens is because the less memory you have, the more often that the CPU or the motherboard realistically has to swap information for the CPU between memory and the hard drive. So uh, more memory doesn't affect the speed of the memory, but it affects the speed of the overall system. Now here's Windows 10 and what Windows 10 says on the Microsoft site about what it needs to run Windows 10. It says it needs one gigabyte of RAM uh, for 32 gig or two gigabytes for 64. And I will tell you that is ridiculously low and it does not run at that. It will boot uh, and it will do nothing else. Uh, if you put that small amount of RAM in to a Windows 10 system with one gig, it basically runs out of memory in about five minutes as soon as you use a couple applications and uh, it's completely unusable. So on our site, in the book, there's a section called how much RAM do you need? And I will be asking you test questions from Mr. Poole's opinion on how much RAM you need. Now it says right up here that Microsoft Windows 10 says one gig. Uh, I'm gonna tell you the minimum is two uh, gig. So if a question asks, what's Mr. Poole say the minimum for Windows 10? Minimum from me is two gigabytes of RAM, but that's not what I recommend. Uh, for a 32-bit system, which is every system we have in the middle school for students, 32-bit um, operating systems can only see four gigabits, gigabytes, big B is byte, four gigabytes. So I recommend four gigabytes. Every single one of our student machines in the middle school have four gigabytes of RAM. The sweet spot for performance and cost is eight gig. Uh, you get the best performance at eight gig. Now, we're talking 64-bit systems, which is all the staff members and all the high school students. 64-bit um, Windows 10, while Windows says the minimum of two, I'm going to say that the best thing to do is have eight. So if you don't have Windows, if you don't have eight gigabytes of RAM in a Windows 10 64-bit PC, so you need eight gigabytes to hit that sweet spot. Now I have down further for professional use gamer graphics designer, I would say for a high performance gaming multimedia system, you want 16 gig of RAM. And the most I would say anyone would ever see any kind of performance change with is 32 gig of RAM. Once you get past 32, everything is pretty much loaded in memory. You don't see a performance change. And the reason more memory makes a system faster is because we know that the CPU holds all of its data calculation in the CPU at cache or in the system where I am while it's running a program, while it's doing stuff. But what if you have many things going on at one time? So what happens is when it runs out of room on its, on its work area in RAM, uh, the motherboard swaps information from RAM to the hard drive. It writes on what's called a swap file in the hard drive. And then that frees up, frees up space in the system RAM for the CPU to do calculations. And when it needs that information that it wrote to the hard drive, again, it just reads it from the hard drive and writes it into RAM so that the CPU can access it. Because the CPU only accesses RAM, that's why it's primary storage for the CPU. 
So the less memory we have, the more often the motherboard has to transfer between memory and the hard drive. And we know that memory is hundreds of times faster than our hard drive. And if it has to go to the hard drive and swap information back and forth, then it slows the system down. Same CPU, same speed hard drive, same motherboard, but that change in RAM means less reading and writing from the hard drive, which makes the system run way faster. But there's a point where it doesn't need it. So once you get to 32 gig, you're getting to that point where, eh, probably don't need it at all. Now on that chart in the page, it goes down further and lists other things like applications. What does that application say it's need? What's it recommend for various applications? Now it's not an all-inclusive chart. In fact, I'm not going to ask you things off this chart. Um, I'm going to ask you the Windows one, but after that I'm going to ask you current things. Like if I wanted to run X software, how much memory should I have? What is the recommended amount of memory that I would have? For instance, uh, my son just got Skyrim VR for Christmas. So if I want to know what the requirements are, I just type Skyrim VR PC requirements and I will get Google answers there that then I can go to and see straight from the programmers what they say. So for this program, they're saying minimum memory is 8 gig to run the program. It won't run with that less than 8 gig and recommended is also 8 gig. So 8 gig is fine for this program. Um, the difference on this one between minimum and recommended is the version of Windows, the processor, and the video card. On other pieces of software, like the newer Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the minimum for that is 8 gig. Recommended is 8 gig, but if you want to use it up at high resolution settings, you need 16 gig of RAM to run it there. So you can see as I get to higher performance software with higher video settings, all of a sudden I'm, I'm ramping up how much RAM I, I will need to run that specific program. So, and that's if you're just doing that program. Frequently in this class I'm doing video editing while I'm doing a presentation, while I've got something else running in the background, and I might need even more memory than that 16 gig threshold. That's when I might say, hey, you know what, if I had 32 this would run even better. So, memory amounts don't affect the speed of the stick, they affect the speed of the overall system. And like I said just a minute ago, it is the easiest and least expensive um, upgrade that you can do for your sh machine that you may see immediate results from. If you've got 4 gig and you go to 16, you are going to see a huge difference in the old overall performance of your system. And all you have to do is turn it off, unplug it, clear out the, the uh, motherboard power, Pop them out, pop them in. You guys have done that multiple times at this point. So you know how easy it is to physically do memory. And all you have to do is take off one side panel to do it uh, in order to upgrade. Obviously, upgrading speed will make a difference in your system as well. If you have the lowest speed that your motherboard needs and you can double the speed of your RAM, um, that will be in a performance. But the single biggest thing is getting to 16 gig first or eight, at least eight, um, you're going to see a really, really good performance boost. If you've already got 16 and it feels slow, could be something else. Could be the speed of your RAM, could be the speed of your hard drive too. But that's um, how memory affects uh, the overall speed of our system. Okay, the last thing I've got in here on really extras on memory is called memory leakage. Uh, you can see the definition there. Basically, it says, and in, in this is straight from Wikipedia, uh, in computer science, a memory leak is a type of resource leak that occurs when a computer program incorrectly manages memory allocations in a way that the memory is no longer needed or is not released. What does that mean? Let's say you've got 8 gig of RAM on your laptop, and... Um, you are one of those people who never shuts it down. You just let it go to sleep when you close the lid and then you open back up. Every single time you open a program, Windows allocates a certain amount of memory to that program. In fact, 
that list back here that said how much memory do you need to run these programs, that's how much it requests when it opens the program. In other words, if I open Adobe X, that's 10, Adobe, T, Adobe 10 Pro, it can open with 512 megabytes of memory free. It would like a whole gigabyte of memory to free. In other words, when I use that software application, it gets a gig of RAM from Windows to use for that program. It's allocated by the CPU through the operating system, one gig of my total eight gig. One eighth of my RAM is now in use by Adobe 10 Pro. Um, and if Adobe 10 Pro is programmed and runs correctly, when I close Adobe 10 Pro, that one gig of RAM goes back to Windows and is then available for other programs. But many times programmers don't do a good job in releasing memory when a program ends. Sometimes it's our fault by, by uh, crashing that program or closing it when we close our window. But basically what happens with memory leakage is over time, all those individual pieces of memory that are leased out by Windows to individual programs may or may not be returned to Windows. And so the memory doesn't go anywhere, but as far as the operating system is concerned, there's less and less and less memory free to do things with like perform computations. Um, so as we keep our computer on longer and longer and as we open and close programs, memory leakage starts to cause all kinds of pro problems. Number one, my system runs slow. Number two, all of a sudden I can't print or some application doesn't run right. The memory is still there. It just can't use it anymore because of all these programs that have incorrectly returned the memory to the operating system as it was running. The only way for us as a user to solve a memory leakage problem is to reboot our PC. We know as soon as we reboot, clears out all the memory, and when the operating system comes up, all that, oper all that memory is now available to the program through the operating system again, which is why every single time a staff member calls and says, I've got a problem with this all of a sudden, my first question is, have you rebooted your PC? They don't understand why, and it frustrates them sometimes. Why is Mr. Poole always asking me that problem? Because I'm going to say 75% of the time, as soon as they reboot their PC, the problem is gone. Now, what caused it? Well, what caused it was something, whether it was a web app through Chrome or a program itself or something they're running, something has made it lose its mind. It's lost its memory. It's leaked. And that's what memory leakage means. And a simple restart of the PC, all of a sudden, everything works again. Uh, which is also why, if I'm doing something really important, um, I'll reboot my PC before I even start, just to clear it out and make sure everything's running fresh when I start to use the application that I want to use. So that's memory leakage. Now, if we look at the chapter book, I think I've got it open here someplace. There we go. Nope, that's not it. Let's see. There we go. If we look at the chapter book, there's also a little extra information on uh, voltages of RAM and how the voltages have changed. Um, and there's a nice little video on, uh, uh, from Linus Text Tips on whether memory upgrades matter and what his opinion is on uh, memory upgrades. I'd like you to watch that one as well and read through this memory extra section. And that concludes all of our information on this section on memory.